So a couple of days ago, Apple released the GM for OS X Mavericks, and the GM is basically the release version, like a couple of weeks before it's been released. So what I did is I turned it into a VMware image, which I'm going to show you how to use in this video, which allows you to run OS X Mavericks on a Windows PC in VMware. Now, in, if you look in the description, there is a link to a blog post, and inside that blog post, you'll find download links, um, so a torrent download link and direct download links. And all you have to do is go download the image, and you'll be left with this file here. And what you want to do is extract that with 7-zip. Um, WinRAR sometimes doesn't work, so make sure you use 7-zip. And if you don't have 7-zip, you can just run this command here and it'll extract for you. And you'll be left with this folder. And inside there, we have three more folders. And so this top folder is basically just the VMware image. The second folder is the hardware bypasser, which I'll come back to in a minute. And the bottom one is the Mac OS X guest unlocker. Now everybody needs to have run this guest unlocker if they haven't run it already. And if you check in the top left of the video, um, there's a link of how to do that. It's really, really simple. Or you can just read the readme inside that video, inside the uh, folder. Now for people that need to run the hardware bypasser, you don't need to run it unless you see very specific errors. And the error is something along the lines of Mac OS X guest is unsupported with software virtualization, please use hardware virtualization or something like that. Now, um, I'll put in the description like that exact message, and that's, that is the only time you should use the hardware bypasser. A lot, of the a lot of the questions I get asked by people is people that have used the bypasser without needing to, and it's actually broken. Um, it's actually broken their OSX Mavericks installation, so um, only run that if you have to. And again, um, check the top left and the top right of the video for instructions on how to use both. And so, once you've run the guest unlocker, um, which, by the way, now has support for VMware 10 and VMware Fusion 6. Um, we then go into OS X Mavericks and double-click the VMX to open it in VMware. Now, it's important to note that I built this on VMware 9 and it works on VMware 9 and VMware 10. It should probably work with VMware 8, although I'm not entirely sure about VMware 7. So if people can let me know how that plays out, um, that would be appreciated. And so you'll have a screen that looks something like this. I'm on VMware 10 right now. And you can see that I made the compatibility to be VMware Workstation 9. Now, if you have 8 or 7, um, you can just delete the VMX and then create a new VMX and then just um, link the hard drive up to it. But make sure you flag the new um, virtual machine as Mac OS X guest and then whichever the latest 64-bit version of Mac you select is. So I think on VMware 8, it's just 10.864 bit. I'm not entirely sure. Whereas if you're on 10, um, you would then get the ability to go to 10.9 um, 64 bit, or 10.9 rather. So um, it's up to you which one you want to use, but I would recommend 9 or 10. And so, although I haven't filled it in yet, when you download this in this little corner, there will be some contact info and places you can find support. So if you have any issues, just check that out there. And you can also email me and I'll also put my email in there. So what we want to do now is we need to go to Edit Virtual Machine Settings, and this is where you tailor it to yourself. So this is where you allocate your RAM. Um, I usually stick with a gigabyte, just because my laptops in sand look pretty well, um, but other people might want to give more. And um, a specific thing to note is this blue marker here, you don't want to go above that um, just because that it'll, will pretty much, although your VM will be smooth, it'll probably lag out your host system, and so it kind of trades off. So um, avoid going above the blue line. And uh, here you can select the number of processes and the number of cores. Um, be very aware that sometimes doing this can break the image depending on your processor configuration. So if you're having issues that you don't know and you've changed these settings up here, um, just change them back to one and try again and see if that fixes it. And then obviously there's the hard disk, which you can expand down here if you want to. And be aware that once you expand the hard disk in here, you still have to expand the partition inside the Mac VM system um, to take advantage of the new free space that's now become available. And then we also have CD drive, um, the network to the USB controllers, sound card, display, etc. Um, sound should work out of the box, or at least should work for a lot of people out of the box. If you want to just specify sound card, um, you can go in here and do it. 
So that's pretty simple. And then in this bit over here, um, just to show you my settings right now, I have Mac OS X 10.8, and I also have 10.9 as you know settings, but I'm going to leave it with 10.8. Um, so leave that as it is, and everything else is pretty much okay. The shared folders you can enable later once we've inst if you've installed VMware tools. Um, the way to do that I'll show you right now is just to click Always Enabled, click Add, and you get this little wizard. And then select the host path that you want to add. So for example, um, I'll just link to my PDF folder. And then call the folder whatever you want, enable the share, and press finish. And once you've installed VMware tools, that folder will now appear inside your VM, which is easily accessible. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't want that right now. And then once you've configured it how you like, just click power on this machine. Now it's important to say, um, just very quickly actually on this, just click I copied it, it doesn't really matter, it's just because um, it registers the um, UUID of the hard drive, but just ignore that. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, it's, it's important to note that I ha this build is obviously very new, um, seeing as the GM came out yesterday. So there's probably bugs that I haven't come across yet, but in theory everything should be fine because I've been working on the developer previews as they've been coming. And um, this build has built-in graphic support, not to the extent of QE, um, which is Quartz Extreme enabled, um, which allows people to use things like um, uh, I don't know, like I think. Logic needs it and various other programs require this, but that's not going to happen in VMware for a very long time, to be completely blunt. Um, but in terms of what I mean by inbuilt graphics support is that you have the option to pick between many resolutions instead of just the um, 1080 by 800 or whatever it is you get by default. Um, you can also install VMware tools if you want more access to different resolutions than to go to like full screen. Although um, for a majority of resolutions, you can just select your resolution in the Mac settings and then go to full screen and it'll match. So that kind of works out. Um, everything else should be working fine. As I said, there's probably a few bugs that I haven't come across, but I'll probably just patch those as they come along. And um, yeah, it's usually um, fairly quick to start up, but on the first boot, it takes a bit longer. So just make sure you give it some time to start because obviously it has to load all the, uh, the startup like sequence. So if we just wait for this. And once this logo down here um, sticks, that means that it's about to start. And if you look in the top left, you should be able to see a mouse. So that, that's the sure sign that it's starting up. And then you'll get the spinning circle. And in a couple of seconds, we'll see the startup screen. Right, so here we go on the Mac startup screen. Um, just select wherever it is you're from. Um, just go through with this as you normally would. Um, you can sign in with your Apple ID or you don't have to. And that's one of the things is that I haven't tested the iMessage enabler on this system yet, so um, make sure you take snapshots before you mess about with that. Although in theory it should work, but maybe I need to update some of the boot stuff inside it, which I'll get around to um, very soon. And that's that's just a, a hunch, I'm not entirely sure if that's the case. And so just set up your account, and keep yourself a password or whatever it is you want. And then click continue, and it should create an account. Um, the only reason I do it this way is because I got too many people asking me about what the password was and there was that wasn't actually a password so I just figured it's easier to just let people put it in themselves. And so we get to this point where it finishes setting up the Mac. And after this it should put us straight into Finder. And as I said, because this is the first startup, it's kind of slow at this point, but it does speed up once you've eventually set it all up.
So now um, you can see I am in Mavericks. Um, I'll just give it a second to completely load. But you can see that my sound is enabled. Um, maybe actually I can see if you can hear the sound click. Maybe not. Oh well, um, I think that's just the fact that my sound is too quiet. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you can hear that the sound clicks. So the sound that sound is actually coming from inside the VM. So that's um, kind of proof that sound works, I guess. Let me just lower my sound. And so the Mac Doc is now loaded. We can see iBooks, the, the new version of iBooks, and you know the new maps and stuff. So you can tell that it is actually Mavericks. And just to give you a bit more, a bit more like proof, I guess, you can see 10.9. And this is the GM version, as I said. So um, as I said, obviously it's you can tell it's kind of like on first boot. Oops, don't want to do that. And if we go to system preferences. and then go to displays you can see that we now have a bunch of resolutions built in so if i just select um i don't know as an example 1280 by 960 you can see that the screen size changes and yeah so basically you those are the resolutions you have um preset so go ahead and pick whichever and you can also change it to be the best for your display, um, which is basically um, kind of like an adaptive like screen type thing. And also you can just go to GameWire Tools eventually, once you've installed it, and just change it to fit to full screen if you wish. So that's, um, that's that. And um, apart from that, there isn't really anything else to say. Um, you can install things like Xcode from the App Store and they work just fine. Um, just make sure you do it on a quick connection because otherwise it can kind of like lag out and then that kind of affects the VM. Um, as I said, any issues that were in Mountain Lion probably for the most part still exist. So any kind of graphic issues I probably haven't addressed. Um, but that's just how it is. I just wanted to get this out as soon as possible for people that were wanting the new Xcode because somebody told me that that was Mavericks only. So I'm not sure about that, but I just figured people probably want it. And so, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much everything I have to say. Just download it from the link in the description. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or basically email me. Emailing me is probably faster. Um, posting on the site is probably faster. Tweeting me is faster. I really don't check YouTube all that often, to be completely honest. Um, but you can find contact information for me pretty much everywhere, to be honest. And so um, that's basically that. Um, so yeah, if you have any issues, just let me know. Um, I'll try to sort it out as you know quick as possible. And um, we're also in the process of compiling um, a frequently asked question list on the website, just because we get asked the same things over and over again, um, even though they've been answered like a hundred times. So I guess um, that's just something we have to take care of. And so. Yeah, um, remember if you have, if you download via torrent, remember to seed for a while, please, just to keep it you know keep it going. Um, if you want, you can donate to the team on the website in the sidebar. Um, all of that is appreciated because we're currently up for um, hosting renewal and stuff. So obviously that's kind of a big deal. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Um, hopefully it all works fine for you. Um, I'm not, I can't comment on how well AMD is going to go with this because there isn't a specific AMD kernel built in, so it'll be kind of a hit and miss for a lot of people. Although there is work in progress on a Mavericks kernel in on the Insane Mac community thread where the Mountain Lion kernel was developed, so we'll see how that turns out. And yeah, so basically just let us know how this worked for you. Um, do it on the website though in the actual comment section and just I guess um, I hope this helps you out and I hope everything works fine. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video which will probably either be 10.9.1 or some sort of fix for 10.9. Bye.